Today I'm going to walk through a real life scenario of how to use or when to use webhook. So let's say for example, you have a application which needs to react to a notification based on uh, order status. And let's say the order status is being generated from a third party application. So for the purpose of this demonstration, what I have done is I have created a React application for managing order. And it's a very simple application. It has three text boxes for name, email, and address. And on submit, all it does it, it makes a HTTP post request to a, this name is incorrect. It is not webhook, but this is, let's rename this. This is order API. So this is order API. This is order API. And similarly, from the app.jsx, we are going to send the order API. And order API is running at 5026 API order. And this is the UI. It's very straightforward. It has a name, email, address, and a submit button. And the order API is here. It's running on the port. And this is where it is running. It is running on port 5026. This is the order API. It's currently running. And the order API is also straightforward. It has a post method. Post method does the order processing. Now, in the real life scenario, during order processing, it is probably going to save this data into a database first as a part of the saving of the order. And then what it is doing is, for this example, it is just sending a message to a RabbitMQ exchange. And from the RabbitMQ exchange, a lot of things can get this message and do their own processing. And given that we have this contract with this fictitious company who is running the order system, our contract with this fictitious company is this, every time an order is created, please notify us using our webhook. So for that purpose, this fictitious company has created a order notifier. And in the order notifier, all it is doing is, it is just connecting to the RabbitMQ and then it is calling the webhook. And this is the webhook URL 5081. And this is the webhook that we created last time. It is the same webhook. It is running here. It is taking the API key and then it is processing the request. So consider this particular webhook is a webhook running on your side, whereas the order notifier, the order API, as well as the order application is running on some sort of external vendor product. And this can be, for example, a CRM product, or it can be a order management system for selling your product it really doesn't matter, but this is the application. This is the web application, which is running. And this web application is calling the order API backend of that particular company. And then in terms of this design, I introduced a RabbitMQ, but it is not necessary. The order API owners can directly make a webhook request, but in terms of a distributed design, it is better to segregate the responsibility. Hence, the order API should be just saving the order. And if the order save is successful, it should send a message to the queue so that any processor who needs to do post processing on the order can react to it. And that is what exactly I have done. And for this purpose, what I am doing is I am using the NuGet package. It's in running mode, so the NuGet package is not showing up, but I'm using the RabbitMQ.client NuGet package directly. And in the order processor, all I'm doing is I'm creating a connection factory using the URI. And my RabbitMQ is running 
right here it's an external revit mq it has it has this exchange the order exchange an order exchange is connected to this notification queue now first let's look into the order processing part here we create a connection factory create connection create a channel and then we declare an exchange call order underscore exchange of type fan out and then we get the message we serialize the message convert into bytes and then we are just publishing the message into this exchange as body and then closing the connection next in terms of the order notifier whose sole responsibility is to listen to the order exchange connected through a queue call notification and once the message is received its responsibility is to call our webhook so here what is happening is first just creating the connection factory creating a connection and a channel and then declaring the exchange just before and then here we are declaring a queue call notification and then binding this queue to this exchange and then after that we are just creating a consumer for this particular channel and then creating a receive event handler to receive a message as and when it occurs and once we receive the message we are just getting the body out of the message converting it to a string just writing this message into console but then after that this is where webhook call is happening so here first we are creating an http client then setting the authorization header and if you remember the webhook that we created last time had a authorization key called api key i'll come back to the webhook and re-explain it for the people who are watching these videos for the first time and not seen the previous one so it is setting the authorization header as the api key then it is making a http post request with the string content of header and body header being order body is the incoming message and header and body because the web hoop accepts the format of header and body so that is what it is doing and then i'm setting the content type as application json and then waiting on the result and checking if it is okay then success otherwise failure and after the event handler i'm just doing a basic consume for consuming the message and i'm here setting up auto acknowledge as true meaning as soon as the message is received it is acknowledged on the queue and it will be removed from the queue if i set the auto acknowledge at false then i have to manually acknowledge the message here now this is out of scope for this video because it is strictly a feature of RabbitMQ, but this is something to keep in mind and then i'm just waiting on this and this is the console which is running here which is the order notifier and you can see it is doing this press enter to exit this line so this is also listening and now finally the webhook that we declared last time which is it is just doing a map post and a webhook url and it is checking the authorization header if it is missing it is throwing a 401 and then it is getting the value out of authorization header and if the authorization header is not equal to api key also it is throwing an error now i hard coded here a string api key and as i mentioned in my last video this value should technically be coming from a data store and it should be saved encrypted in a data source and it should be decrypted in the code and compared and then after that I'm just getting the content out of the request body and serializing it into webhook payload which has header and body and if you remember that is why in the order notifier here we were sending header and body as a part of the request and we are doing that because this is the payload that we expect and then if it is successful we are just sending 200 back and writing webhook dot acknowledged so that is the end-to-end -end code 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the web UI and execute the code and then debug through this part of the code. For rest of the code, it is all running in the console. So let me go back to the web UI. And here I already put a name, email and address. So let me submit this. As soon as I submit, the message first went to, first went to this one, the order API. Order API sent the message to RabbitMQ. Then the RabbitMQ listener received this message. And then it made a post call to our webhook. And now we got the request back into our webhook. And in webhook, we are just going to check API key is matching. It was the API key. And then here also, we're going to transform the request body and we can see that the header is order and body is what we passed there. And then we are going to print it out and send a response status as okay. And if we look here, we're getting the message posted successfully, which is the console after making the webhook call. And here also we could see a message was posted a few minutes back in the RabbitMQ. So this is a example of how normally we will be using webhook in a distributed system. And as I mentioned here, this web application is belonging to a hypothetical company and the webhook belongs to your company or it can be vice versa. The application can be yours. The client can be yours. Whereas a third party application owner might have given you the webhook. So this is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.